So, good evening. Tonight I have a video for you which I thought was probably the most important one of all of them. And I probably should have done that a lot earlier. And that has to do with two things where there's a lot of confusion about. For one is the resting point, what we call, which is the final stop of this plate when you tap it and it goes to its end stop. And then what we call the play and how this actually interrelates to the piston of the fuel distributor. And this unit here is quite dirty. And if you watch the video series, uh, the big repair, this is my original airflow assembly, if you want to call it. I think that's what they call it, airflow meter, airflow assembly. And um, the reason why I had to replace this is there's a story to this. Um, the 5.6 and the 4.2 liters have a very bad habit and it comes with the neglect of the scheduled maintenances, I believe at 25,000 and 50,000 miles, 75,000, 100 miles. Because in those intervals, if I'm not mistaken, um, the oxygen sensor has to be replaced. And I bought my 420 SEL back in when was it 1996 early 96 it was a 88 or 89 model with 45,000 miles on it so I was just 5,000 miles short of uh, the service the 50,000 mile service and uh, I didn't look at the service records but uh, something which turned out then later on wasn't done and what happened was I started the car and it was a fall no it was in the winter it was january late january of 1996 and i sat in the car i started the car but it wasn't very cold it was above freezing and i start to drive and suddenly the engine light comes on and i'm at the stoplight and i'm pushing the gas pedal and i'm getting over the intersection the light has changed i'm going over the intersection and the engine suddenly backfires. I mean, that was a bombastic backfiring. And then the engine died out. And I sat there, I barely made it to the other side. I rolled over, I got into neutral and I rolled over to the other side. I had to call the tow truck and everything else. Well, long story short, when these units backfire because of a malfunctioning uh, oxygen sensor, then the back pressure goes against this plate and this whole system here with the end stop this is the actual end stop down here this pin is going to be pushed up and then you can see on how far actually this is the reason why i took this out and this is the normal position for the plate and this is how far it had moved up so you can see this is probably good i would say a half an inch three eighths of an inch to a half an inch this is how strong the back pressure is when it backfires. And on top of this, and this is why I replaced this unit with a new one, is that the plate actually is bent on this. So I can demonstrate this of what you need to do to get the plate actually adjusted properly. But in the end, this plate is no longer flat and you cannot flatten this out. So this thing is basically toast. And this is exactly what I had with my 420. So on one of the previous owner, this happens. And if you're trying to adjust a car, any type of mixture control starting um, whatsoever, you're not gonna get this going. Well, anyway, let me just show you on uh, where we need it to be in our manual. It will show us here the position actually for the plate. And you can see this, this is flush with the lower bottom of the plate with these two corners here. And you can see this really nice when you look inside and you push this out, this would be right this position here. Let me see if I can zoom in. And then you can, I hope I can show you this. My fingers are now dirty and you should be able to see this. Let me see if I can bring this a little bit over. Right here, you see this? We're right flush on all sides. This here is your resting point. The bottom of the plate with this edge here, right here. 
this edge. Then you have the exact position you need and then your car will start without having to crank it for very long. And um, how do we get there? In, in this instance, it won't work 100% right because it is a little bit old, but it has to do with this pin here. This is the resting pin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a dowel. And now, there you go. And let's see, we're getting a lot closer. We're not low enough yet, a little bit more. That's about right here. Now this unit is back in its position where it needs to be. I can you can just then push it in and look from the inside, and we're nearly perfect in the alignment here. We can give it a little tap more. So that should do it. Yep, this is acceptable. And now we have reached this point here where we need to be, right here. This here and this here. And now you can adjust. Let me go and zoom back out. You get your three millimeter Allen key and usually the the rod is here, so now I can actually turn the rod up, or I can turn it down. Let me see our piston here from the fuel distributor. And now we can actually adjust the point on when the fuel flow is actually going to start. We can lower it, or we can increase it or decrease it. And with this, you can get the perfect start. But you see now, this is my new position where it was before. And now we're actually sitting right here. And what you want is as soon as this goes to this position here, when the vacuum comes, the fuel distributor has to open up and the thing has to run. And that's basically all there is. And all this thing does is it uh, changes the relationship of where this plate actually hits the piston and then on when it actually starts to press. So what you want to do is you want to press here and you want to hear the fuel flow already at this point. Then your engine is going to start every single time. And then you can do all the other adjustments. But this is the very first one. On a lot of cars, those plates are going to be off like it was on mine. And with just tapping this part in here, uh, you can adjust the height if you go too far, then you just simply go back, you take your hammer and go back the other way. And you don't want to overdo it. And that's about it. This is basically on how you adjust this here, so the resting point. If your resting point is higher, you want this so-called play. And this means when I push this plate down, there should be a little tiny gap between this ball here and the piston about a millimeter. So when it comes down as higher it is up, as more of a play you want. So there's no fuel flow as long as this moves down. But when you do it, adjust it like this, you will have an immediate fuel flow and the engine is gonna rev up every single time. But like I said, is on this plate, this is no longer level, which means it is not gonna work 100%, right? You probably could use it the way it is right now but it will not give you an optimum performance on this. Um, tomorrow night, I'm going to do the adjustment of the uh, idle speed air uh, idle speed air valve on how to pull this out and how to adjust this properly. But this was the more important one. This is the first one you want to check. It is easier to do when you take it out of your car because now you can see it from the backside where you can have a nice feel and a nice alignment 
and you can see we're a little bit higher here and a little bit lower on this side because the plate is no longer straight. You could get a new plate, but the question is if the arm was bent or out of whack from the back pressure in it. That is something we don't know. So this thing might be fixable, it may not be fixable, but this had definitely experienced the backfiring the same what I had on my 420. And that's why I took this out. And that is actually shown in the big repair. And what I did on the replacement unit uh, just yesterday when I replaced the uh, altitude sensor is I readjusted this a little bit further down and now my car starts exactly as soon as you crank over uh, whether it's cold or warm the engines uh, makes no difference and the idle speed has stabilized this is the starting point if this is not correct nothing will work this is the first thing you need to check if you have it in the car do it very carefully it is easier, like I said, is when you take it out because you can see and you can hear the click. So you want to hear this here and then you know this is your resting point and you can visually align this exactly here on that edge between this part here of the Venturi and the top part. This is where you want the bottom plate to be flush on all sides and you want to have that. I think the gap was 0.05 millimeters all around that this plate is absolutely centered. And then you will have a perfect car. And you can see here, this is actually the three millimeter Allen screw. And what this does is it raises or lowers this part here, just this part. It goes in or out depending how you're setting this. And that will uh, change the point of when fuel flows and how much depending on the position here of the plate and that plate position depends on your vacuum how good your vacuum is that's why you can't have any vacuum leaks and the whole thing is then sent back via this potentiometer which I had taken out I put it back on here so it is covered you know because there's a couple parts in there which link up to it so I wouldn't lose it and this has to work 100% right. The altitude sensor has to work. The water temperature sensor has to work. And the oxygen sensor has to work. And on the California model, the EGR temperature sensor as well. That is the main criteria. And then the idle speed control or idle control switch, uh, the throttle position switch to be correct, has to work too. So that knows exactly when they are when your plate is closed on your throttle, when the throttle is closed, that that switch is closed. And as soon as you move it by 0.2 millimeters, that that opens up. And then you're going to be good to go. There's no magic to these cars. It is kind of plain, simple, straight and forward. Check that this plate is absolutely level. If this is bent like a little bit, even a little, you know, bent out on one side or the other, you will never get that straight. You probably could get a replacement plate and um, get a feeler gauge of 0.05 millimeter and put this back in and then just do the adjustment and you can reuse the housing as long as the overall bearings and um, the mechanism here for the uh, three millimeter allen screw is still working for you you can take this all apart clean it out uh, re-lubricate it, check bearings, change bearings on it. The bearings are sitting in here on the side. There's an overhaul kit. You take this clip out, you can drive the shaft out, and then this whole thing comes out and you can rework this. Bosch has a, used to have a rebuild kit for those. And um, I went the other route. I just bought a good used unit with a, with a known good plate in it. I think for 50 or 75 bucks of eBay. And uh, I put a new boot on it. This here is the lower bracket which holds the boot in place with all the associated screws. I put them exactly back into place in a case I will need a emergency airflow assembly. Uh, you know, at one point or another in 20 years, we may not have them at all anymore. It's going to be real difficult to find. And then you may come along at the new plate and then at that point I would just put a new plate in and I would take it apart and clean it, you know, get it all cleaned up. But on this one here, because of the condition it was in, I did not waste a minute um, to do it. Or oh, the other thing is in, in this drawing here in the book, they have shown the screw 
to be here actually to be pushed down this is for the 3.8 liter and the 5 liter only this is where your fuel distributors and this is where the feed line is with the little screen they got underneath it on these on these ones here for the 420 and the uh 5.6 4.2 uh, 4.2 and 5.6 liter this is this screw down here which holds this bracket with this pin in place and this entire bracket down here you can see it um, is actually the resting place there is a pin here on this arm and this pin will actually hit against this plate back here there's two pins actually on there they activated it on this one here on the left hand side where this pin is on the other one there's a pin on the other side which can be driven out from underneath here you can see this it's right here and this would be the one for the 3.8 liter and the uh, 5 liter engine. They have it on that side. And on that one, they have it basically reversed. So on the 4.2 and on the 5.6 liter, this pin here is the one you're driving down, not this one. That is important. Uh, you want to remember this. This is the side of the potentiometer. 5.6, 4.2, 3.8, 5.0 on the fuel feed line side and with that you have a great evening